Let's know about our erased history today. In one way or another, all ancient cultures tell the same story. In the beginning, the universe did not exist. Time and matter did not exist. There was what is known as infinite love. All the spirits were connected, forming one. Each spirit had its consciousness and the fact that they were connected gave them the ability to have infinite possibilities. In many cultures and religions, infinite love is known as God, the all and universal energy among others. The spirits in infinite love exist in the form of energy. A group of these spirits decided to experiment with matter. They wanted to experience being separated from each other. They achieved this by creating a material universe in which they would incarnate as individual beings made up of matter. To sustain the universe, the infinite created an energy known as the matrix, which is contrary to what spiritual energy represents. If spiritual energy is the positive energy of love, then the energy of the matrix represents negativity. The infinite created the matrix with its consciousness and gave it instructions to determine what the material universe where the spirits were going to incarnate would be like. The matrix forged the universe in a way contrary to what the spirits represent. Infinite love is the spiritual union that forms one. The matrix created the material universe based on differences and separation. It forged opposite poles, such as feminine and masculine, light and darkness among other things. The matrix was the one who determined that living beings would live on isolated planets. Infinite love allowed all this as I wanted to experience matter to the extreme levels of negativity and separation. The spirits that disconnected from the infinite entered the universe without remembering who they were before they got there. The matrix was instructed to do everything possible so that the spirits did not recognize that they were one and did not return to the infinite. This is the basic foundation of what is called the universal spiritual game. When the spirits that are within the universe recognize that they are one, then they will return to infinity. The experiences we have in the material world are part of a game. To reach the infinite, spirits must evolve spiritually through unconditional love. The more love and acceptance there is between living beings regardless of differences, the more one evolves spiritually. Spirits must reincarnate in different bodies to experience various experiences that lead to greater unconditional love. The material universe is divided into several dimensions. There are around nine dimensions where spirits reincarnate, the third dimension being the lowest. The greater unconditional love the spirits achieve, the more they rise to other dimensions that are closer to the infinite. Spiritual evolution is also achieved when we integrate opposite poles, when we do not identify with ideas that are opposite of each other. A good example is about the masculine and feminine. These are concepts that have been socially established as different. When we stop identifying with both concepts and manage to integrate them, then we achieve spiritual evolution. Spirits are the only eternal energy within the universe. The energy of the matrix, on the other hand, needs to feed on other energies to stay alive. The main energy that the matrix needs is negative energy related to fear. When living beings feel fear or hatred, they produce negative energy which the matrix feeds. To obtain the energy of fear, the matrix created negative energy beings with their consciousness. Like spirits, beings created by the matrix reincarnate into bodies within the material universe. Negative energy beings are commonly known as the lords of darkness. The objective of these beings is to provoke conflicts and wars in the societies where they incarnate to create fear and hatred. They absorb the negative energies created by the spirits and then pass them to the matrix so that they can be nourished. Initially, the method used by the matrix to feed was beneficial because the conflicts created by the lords of darkness forced living beings to become conscious and thus evolved spiritually. Conflict was a good way to achieve spiritual evolution. The problem is that as time passed, the matrix became stronger and began to take greater control of the universe. The conflicts created by negative energy are so many that the spirits have engaged in a pitched battle against the lords of darkness around the entire universe. It is under this framework that the Milky Way begins to develop. In this part of the universe, there are many intelligent races. But however, there are two in particular that are most renowned. These two races are humans and reptiles. The human race originated in the Lyra constellation, specifically the planet Avion. The first humans to develop on said planet were what is known as the Nordic race. They were white blonde humans with blue eyes. The reptiles are native to the planet Aln in the Orion constellation and the planet Alpha Draconis in the Draco constellation. Orion reptiles have a physical appearance similar to snakes and Draco reptiles have a physical appearance like dinosaurs and dragons. The reptiles of both constellations were gathered in an organization known as the Alliance. Humans and reptiles developed in isolation. Culturally, both races are practically opposite each other. 
Humans had justice and equality among all races in the galaxy as ideals. The reptiles understood that they were the first intelligent race in this part of the universe, and therefore they had the right to conquer the entire Milky Way and eliminate or enslave other races that stood in their way. Humans were organized communally and were polarized on the feminine side. The women owned the leadership positions. On the other hand, the society of the reptiles was a patriarchal one, and they were organized in an authoritarian and hierarchical way. In spiritual matters, humans represented the positive energy of light and reptiles represented the negative energy of darkness. Within the Milky Way galaxy, the Dark Lords reincarnated primarily in reptilian societies. This was their initial field to create conflicts and wars in this part of the universe, and in this way obtained the energy of fear on which they feed. When humans and reptiles first met, it didn't take long for conflicts to occur between them. For many of the reptiles, the human ideals of justice and equality were synonymous with weakness. For humans, reptilian ideals were synonymous with evil. A good understanding was not achieved between both groups, and they ended up engaging in a pitched war that has lasted for millions of years and has continued in different dimensions. The first unfortunate event in this war was the destruction of the planet Avion by the reptilians. The destruction of Avion forced groups of humans to move to different constellations to find other planets to live on. On the new planets that humans inhabited, other atmospheres and environments existed. Humans evolved physically according to the atmosphere of the planets they inhabited. From that moment, racial diversity began to be created among humans. Skin color and physical characteristics varied according to the atmosphere of the planets. Later, a group of humans and reptiles decided to organize to find a solution to the war between both races. They created an organization, which is known as the Intergalactic Federation. The members of this organization identified mostly with the spiritual side of light. The first action that the Federation carried out was to create a military ship in case it was necessary to get involved in war conflicts. For this, they took a piece of the destroyed planet Avion and rebuilt it as if it were a ship. This military planet ship is commonly known as Nibiru. This planet belongs to the Intergalactic Federation of the Pleiades constellation. Nibiru has an extensive orbit that is not restricted to a single solar system, and the crew can also change their route if they wish. The members of the Federation understood that the war between humans and reptiles was due to two main reasons. First, because the ideologies of both races were opposite. Second, because in the cultures of the two races, free will did not exist. Both humans and reptiles sacrificed people's thinking for the benefit of the group. Both had rigid ways of thinking which made it difficult to find new ideas that would improve understanding between the two races. The members of the Federation concluded that to end the war, they must create a new society where the conflicting ideologies of humans and reptiles could be integrated. Many understood that a race had to be created that had the genetics of both groups. In this way, the new hybrid beings would not identify with any of the two races in particular. They concluded that the perfect planet to carry out this experiment was none other than planet Earth. Millions of years ago, planet Earth was different than it is now. Our planet was twice as big and was known as Tiamat. Many intelligent races formed civilizations here. On several occasions, our planet has suffered catastrophes that have brought it to the brink of destruction. Some for natural reasons and others due to wars caused by the races that have inhabited this planet. The first intelligent race to inhabit Tiamat were the reptiles. As the first inhabitants, they claimed Tiamat as their property. In the era of the dinosaurs, there were many wild reptiles, but there were also intelligent reptile civilizations. The sky was completely covered by a thick cloud which was known as the firmament. Thanks to this cloud, the seasons of the year did not exist. The entire planet was ruled by a subtropical climate. Rain and wind were scarce and at night the stars were not visible in the sky. So around a million years ago, members of the Intergalactic Federation arrived on Tiamat aboard the planet Nibiru. The expedition was led by Anu who was commander of Nibiru. Anu was a descendant of the original humans of the planet Avion. The Nibirians decided to carry out their experiment on Tiamat because they discovered that a primitive human race existed on this planet which they considered perfect for their experiment. These early humans were what we know today as Neanderthals. Members of the Federation gathered a group of Neanderthals and altered their organizational form. The Federation would ensure that primitive humans evolved in a certain way that could develop individual thought and free will. The problem they faced was that Tiamat was already inhabited by reptilian civilizations. At first, the reptiles did not intervene in the Federation project and remained on the sidelines. The conflicts began when members of the Reptilian Alliance from the constellations of Orion and Draco 
learned of the Federation's projects on the planet Tiamat. The members of the Alliance did not agree with what was happening and put pressure on the reptilians of Tiamat to kill all the primitive humans. At first, the reptiles of Tiamat refused, but over time they ended up agreeing to the pressures of the Alliance. When members of the Federation learned of the reptilian plans to kill primitive humans, they decided to take drastic measures. They understood that they would not be able to carry out their experiment on Tiamat while reptilian civilizations remained on the planet. First, they evacuated the primitive humans and took them in ships to the Pegasus constellation. They then organized a plan to eliminate Tiamat's reptilian civilizations. To achieve this, they pulled one of the moons of the planet Neptune and directed it at high speed towards Tiamat. The impact between the two celestial bodies caused Tiamat to split in two. One of the pieces is the planet Earth that we inhabit today, and the other piece became the asteroid ring. Neptune's moon took its orbit around the Sun and became the planet we know today as Pluto. This catastrophic event was the one that ended the era of the dinosaurs. 98% of life on the planet was destroyed. A small group of reptiles managed to survive by hiding in underground bases. This event angered the members of the Alliance who ended up declaring war on the Intergalactic Federation. In our solar system, the reptiles of the Alliance militarily armed a planet known as Maldek to combat the Federation. The conflict between the Federation and the Alliance became a major war that involved the entire Milky Way. To end the war, the Federation first sent the planet Nibiru commanded by Anu to destroy the planet Aln in the Orion constellation. They then sent Nibiru to our solar system to destroy the planet Maldek. The remains of Maldek today form part of the asteroid ring. The destruction of the planets Aln and Maldek was a hard blow for the reptiles of the Alliance who decided not to continue the war. At that time, the Federation sent Nibiru to our solar system to continue with its plans. The problem they faced was that Nibiru was severely damaged during the war. Said planet has a layer in its atmosphere, composed of monatomic gold that maintains internal heat. The gold layer was largely destroyed by the bombs dropped on Nibiru. The internal temperature became unstable, and many Nibirians were dying as a result. The Nibirians discovered that the gold they needed to restore Nibiru's atmosphere was abundant on Earth. Anu sent a group of astronauts to our planet to work in mines to extract gold and then send it to Nibiru. The astronauts arrived on Earth approximately 700,000 years ago and were commanded by the son of Anu known as Enlil. By this time, much of nature on Earth had been restored. Also, reptilian civilizations descended from the survivors of the destruction of Tiamat had proliferated. Anu concluded that they would not be able to extract the gold without reaching an agreement with the reptilian inhabitants of the Earth. They resolved to make a symbolic marriage between the Queen of Reptiles along with Anu. They combined the genetics of both to create a hybrid being that would serve as an intermediary between the Nibirians and the terrestrial reptiles. This hybrid being, half human and half reptile, is known by the name of Enki. The latter grew up on the planet Nibiru and stood out for being a great scientist. Enki uses the serpent as a symbol, and for this reason many know him as the Serpent of Wisdom. The Nibirian astronauts began to work on extracting gold in the mines and then transporting it to Nibiru. The problem they faced was that the workers they could bring were very few according to the amount of gold they needed. The astronauts began to reveal themselves due to the excessive work of the mines. The Nibirians were in a difficult situation, as many inhabitants of Nibiru were dying. Enki proposed a solution to this problem. He suggested taking several Neanderthals from Earth and altering their genetics to create intelligent human beings. These new beings would work in the mines to extract the gold and would also be the beings that would make up the spiritual evolution plan. In this way, Nibiru was saved and at the same time, the spiritual agenda was continued. The Intergalactic Federation approved Enki's proposal, and the latter would be in charge of carrying out said plan. On Earth, Enki settled with his wife Ninursag in the area we know today as the Middle East. Ninursag was also a leading scientist. The Nibirians built a city known as Eden between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, there, Enki and his wife created the first terrestrial human being by combining the genetics of Neanderthals with the genetics of humans and reptilian Nigerians. They called the first human on Earth Adam. Ninersag carried him in his belly for nine months through artificial insemination. Then, they took Adam's genetics and created the first Earth woman which they called Lilith. The first terrestrial humans, Adam and Lilith, grew up on Eden under the tutelage of the Nibirians Enki decided to educate them by teaching them about science and universal laws. The latter made Enlil uncomfortable and he intervened with Enki to desist from educating Adam and Lilith. 
Enlil understood that knowledge must be discovered by the humans of Earth on their own. Enlil believed that to evolve spiritually, people must acquire knowledge for themselves. In the end, the Niberians sided with Enlil and decided that Adam and Lilith should leave Eden and move to another area where they have to live on their own. Enki and Ninursag created other humans in their laboratories. The Niberians called the humans of Earth as Lulus. For them, this word meant primitive worker. Many of the Lulus were put to work mining for gold. Over time, Nibiru's atmosphere was restored, and the Lulus began to create their independent communities. The development of the Lulus depended on themselves. Members of the Federation caused many of the spirits involved in the intergalactic war between humans and reptiles to voluntarily come to Earth. These spirits reincarnated in the bodies of terrestrial humans. It was determined that the spirits of the Lulus would not remember their previous lives. This was a way to erase the past and start again. The spirits that reincarnated in the Lulus could manifest both the personalities of intergalactic humans and those of reptiles. The bodies of the Lulus possessed the genetics of both space races. According to the Federation, if the spirits on Earth could manifest both consciousnesses on the same planet, it would make it easier for them to integrate and create a new type of consciousness. This would greatly help spiritual evolution. There were groups of Niberians who wanted to take advantage of the Lulus. The Niberians who had greater spiritual evolution respected the Lulus and watched over them. Other groups of Niberians and reptiles preyed on terrestrial humans. In certain areas of Earth, they used the Lulus as slaves or manipulated their consciousness by convincing them that the Niberians and reptiles were gods. Many humans began using terms to refer to Niberians such as Anunnaki. This word means the gods who came down from heaven to Earth. Among the Niberians, there was conflict regarding the Lulus. They were mainly divided between those who sought the spiritual evolution of Earth's humans and those who wanted to manipulate them. Time on the planet Nibiru and Earth runs in different ways. What for Earth is three six hundred years for Nibiru, it is a single year. The physical constitution and metabolism of the Anunnaki are different from humans. When Nibirians travel to Earth, their metabolism continues to function as if they were on the planet Nibiru. This allows them to live for thousands of years on this planet without aging. Niberians can spend three six hundred years on Earth and age within a year. That helped them create the fame of being immortal gods. Approximately 60,000 years ago, Enki was the one in charge of the Earth back then. He invited different human races from the universe to form colonies on Earth. Many human civilizations of the Milky Way galaxy heeded the call and came to settle on our planet. These came mainly from the constellations of Lyra, Pleiades, Sirius and Andromeda among others. Shortly thereafter, extraterrestrial human colonies on Earth came into conflict with certain groups of Niberians. A war was created in which the extraterrestrial humans were forced to leave the planet. Those who stayed ended up mixing up with the Lulus. The mixture between both groups created racial diversity among humans on our planet. Before that, all Lulus belonged to the same race. The Earth is characterized by being the only planet in the universe where all human races coexist. Over time, Lulu societies developed. The first major human civilization on Earth was Lemuria. This civilization was located in the Pacific Ocean area. Lemurios were polarized on the female side. Their culture revolved around spiritual evolution. They were organized communally. In some ways, the Lemurians possessed a type of consciousness similar to intergalactic humans. Shortly after, another great civilization known as Atlantis emerged. This civilization was located in the area of the Atlantic Ocean. Atlantis was polarized on the masculine side. Its system of government was hierarchical and technologically oriented. The Atlantic people mostly possessed the reptilian type of consciousness. The cultural differences between Atlantis and Lemuria were intentionally created by the Nibirians and members of the Federation. The objective was to emulate human and reptilian consciousnesses on the same planet to achieve integration. At first, Lemuria and Atlantis maintained good relations. The problems began when Enki's son known as Marduk entered the scene. The latter grew up on the planet Nibiru, and like his father, he had both human and reptilian genetics. When Marduk became involved in Earth issues, he identified with the reptiles. He spiritually was polarized to the dark side. He did not agree with the creation of the Lulus and advocated for the reptiles to once again take control of the Earth. Marduk devised a plan to accomplish his goals. He first gained the trust of the leaders of Atlantis. He convinced his rulers to conquer the other countries so that Atlantis would have the glory of being the country that ruled the world. Marduk secretly intended to create wars between the Lulu societies so that they would destroy each other, just as happens in current times. And in this way, the reptiles would once again take control of the Earth. 
To ensure further destruction, Marduk gifted advanced military technology to the Atlantic people, knowing that their rulers would abuse it. In a short time, Atlantis became a highly technological country. The Lemurians, being a spiritual culture, disagreed with the new turn that Atlantis was taking. With Marduk instigating the Atlantic leaders to create wars against the Lemurians, it did not take long for conflicts to occur between the two countries. In the end, the leaders of Atlantis decided to destroy Lemuria.